All right, so today we're going to be looking at still life. Now, still life is a drawing of something that is not moving, uh, and um, and so uh, we are going to be looking at uh, this little vase and uh, pair for the example that I'm going to create. <coughs> I'm using the um, Chrome Canvas application today. <laughs> but uh, you can use paper, pencil, markers, crayons, whatever you've got. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about is how we divide the space. When, If, if you notice, I've kind of divided my paper down the uh, middle uh, vertically and horizontally. I've got this uh, line that goes up and down. And that kind of gives me some frame of reference as to where sort of everything goes. And so I can kind of develop my drawing here by sort of looking at you know that that little line of um that um just above that pair i know my my grapes for instance are gonna sort of be right in in this area as they hang down because i'm using that that division of that canvas kind of cutting it in half there and I can use that to kind of adjust and see where those grapes uh, should go I, and so now I've kind of got all my placement and mostly where I like it I think, I think these come down a little further something like that and so uh, what I want to do is I want to look at the basic shapes that make uh, this still life and I've chosen this one specifically because it uses a lot of really cool uh, geometric shapes that also uh, combine to make some interesting sort of organic shapes. So the first thing I'm going to look at is these grapes. These grapes end up being sort of these uh, little spheres, little little uh, uh, little circles, but they have three dimension to them. And we want to be able to show that as we add value. Uh, to our drawing and create those highlights and those shadow areas that show us uh, exactly sort of why this is a why these things are three dimensional and so um, this is actually a lesson that I do with my drawing classes and so I think it's interesting that it's also a lesson that we're going to be doing in this module for shape and so we're looking at still life drawing now you don't have to be drawing these grapes you might be drawing um, uh, a coffee mug maybe your mom or dad's favorite coffee mug and and maybe they're going to take it to work with that painting and hanging up at the wall on the wall at the office or that sort of thing um, but we're looking at how you can break whatever it is that you're drawing down into some very basic, basic shapes that you're already familiar with. That way, as we start to add uh, highlights and, and shadows, you can sort of recall maybe, oh, I remember I drew a sphere. We we learned how to draw and, uh, and add value to show that a sphere is round and that sort of thing. And so I am just going to try to find these lines that make this pair a little a little bolder here it's got a real neat shape to it. i'm a real big fan of pairs pairs are one of my very favorite things uh to draw they've got a a real unique shape they're a little more interesting i believe than uh the common apple which is probably one of the most popular still life uh subjects um I also like to do, I do a lot of still lifes. I like to do wine bottles. They've got a neat shape. That cylinder, uh, adding value to create those cylinders. And if you look at, that's another reason I chose this piece, uh, uh, this uh, photograph to work from. This is a, um, a vase or a, uh, um, I should say a pitcher. Um, but it's being kind of used as a vase here. And it has a sort of cylinder shape so we can apply what we know about adding value to a cylinder and we'll talk about that here in just a second as well so i'm just trying to draw in rough in uh, my basic shapes i've got all these little 
spheres, these little grapes that are down here. I don't know if you can hear the snoring. My little puppy dog is asleep in the background there. Uh, so I'm just drawing in these grapes kind of where I think they should go. And that kind of comes down in here. And so um, take your time with your drawing. Uh, really, you want to spend the most time uh, when you're doing a uh, a full uh, color drawing, really mapping out where everything is. You don't want to start going and adding value and uh, start adding color and then find out that you've got uh, some mistakes in your drawing that that you can't live with, that you're not happy with, that you really got to gotta change. And, and then that makes it more difficult. So I'm just going to sort of loosely put in here where the shadow shape kind of does and something like that. <laughs> and um, I'm pretty happy with what I've got as far as my basic uh, start of this drawing. I think my grapes are about where, where they should go. I like my vase shape. Um, I'm going to pay attention that there's this little table that it sits on, everything sits on, and there's this sort of front lip of that table there. And then all of this really goes into a dark value down here below. So I'm just going to add a little value to this down here below. All right. Uh, I don't know if you hear my family in the background laughing. They're watching Ellen's Game of Games. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to get rid of a little of... Oh, I'm on the wrong layer there. Um, let's see, let me turn that off just. There we go. All right. So, oh, oh, undo that. All right. So now I've got a basic drawing that I'm pretty happy with. And now I'm going to start adding a little bit of value. Now I'm going to come back in and add color as well. Um, but I really want to start paying attention uh, to adding some of the value. And so uh, I'm going to choose uh, color, but I want to pay attention to the value of that color. So I'm going to go to my custom selector and I'm going to start with this background. And, and I kind of like that sort of dark, uh, almost... Uh, orangey rusty sort of background color uh, I would like mine though to be a little more different than those grapes and uh, so they're the grapes and mine are going to be more towards the the red uh, I'm going to have this go a little more towards the orange and then my my um, that'll help my I'm gonna make my little pair a little more towards the green and that'll provide a lot of great contrast for all of that so I want to go up just a little of value I'm going to select for this uh, my um, um, pastel tool, and I'm going to turn my opacity down a little bit. And I'm just going to start adding a little value here in the back and just start laying in a little bit of value and start getting rid of what I call that white of the page. Get rid of what that background, uh, and of course, uh, where mine's transparent, I really like that because I don't have to fight the white. So long as I cover all that squares, those squares, and I can't see those squares, I know I've got a great, um, complete drawing going. And then if I want to, I can always add a layer in the background and pop in a solid color. If I want to add one particular tone that might help tie everything together. So, um... Start with your background. You want to kind of fill in that background. And so then we can focus again on what those shapes are uh, that we're working with. Now, I'm really not paying that much attention to my light yet. Uh, to where the, the light values and the shadows are coming in. Not just yet. I'm just really wanting to mask in a little of that that color in the back. And try to match the basic value. Uh, that I see there and so I also want to get a little of that going oh down here well oh that's still my eraser down here in the bottom 
All right, and I'm going to put a little down here in this shadow area because that table has a little of that kind of going on. Now, I'm going to end up changing all of this in the background. I'm just basically putting down something that I sort of like. But I already know, I, I think it's a little too orange for me. I'm going to want to go with another red. But that's one of the reasons uh, that I like to use these pastels and change the opacity. Because then you can layer and get a little um, a little richer texture, a little uh, more rich um, color and uh, coverage. So I'm going to come up here and change that just to a little more towards this red. And I'm going to come up here and go something like that. And, oh, I kind of like that. There we go. That's getting better already. Oh, and look, I forgot about that. Look at that. I might have to come back and put a little of that orange. So let's go back and do that now so we don't get it too different. We want to keep it all looking the same there. I don't want that to, to stick out like a sore thumb. Like, hey, that doesn't match. So I'm going to go back now. And I'm just kind of adding again. I want to go back and get that little little that let's go with something like that that's oh, that's nice that's real close to what i had and i like that even a little better all right and so i'm blending over and i'm just adding color to my background and what i'm doing here is i am just kind of going up to the edge of what we call those contour lines those lines that form the outside uh, edge of the object uh, of those objects that we're drawing in this case it's that uh, that picture and this pair and uh, maybe you're drawing that coffee mug or um, maybe a stack of books books are really cool because uh, while they don't have the neat rounded going on a lot they um, you can kind of treat those like we do uh, cubes or um, or rectangles and um, and that sort of thing. So, all right. And then I'm going to add a little bit down here. Because, again, that's sort of reflected. All right. And I kind of got what I like what I've got there so far. <coughs> all right. Now, so I am ready to start uh, looking at my picture and start thinking about how I'm going to add a little value. And <coughs> I like to start with a middle value and then add a little darker and a little lighter value. Uh, so I'm going to pick. Uh, something, first of all, that's sort of in this um, uh, same uh, warm value, uh, or I should say warm hue, that hue being the color, um, but I'm going to pick a real light tint. When we add white to a color, we get a tint of that color. So I'm going to go with sort of a medium light version of that, and I think it's somewhere in there. And I'm going to select that, and I'm going to go ahead and start adding that to my to my picture. And to the handle there. And, you know, again, I'm not really looking for detail just yet. Right now, I'm just trying to mask in. And you've heard me probably say this before. I'm making what we call a color map of these shapes. And so this cylinder shape that makes this uh, um, picture uh, is getting this uh, medium tone and then I'll show you what we're going to do we're going to look so the lights coming from the left hand side so first thing I want to do is I want to come over here and pick a really light uh, very light value a tint of that and I'm going to just start applying it to this side of that picture and you can see it's already starting to kind of show that light that that we see now i'm not gonna go all the way to the top because if you notice uh it doesn't go sort of all the way to the top it kind of uh cuts out and then so i'm also now going to turn this size down a little bit and my opacity up just a little bit because i'm going to treat this like i would a real pastel and i'm going to start finding some of my edges here and so Look at this top edge. This top lip is real bright. So I'm going to kind of add that value right there in the top of it. All right. All right. 
All right, let's put that right there. Now I'm ready to start finding some of these darker values where we're going to look and try to find um, where it gets um, uh, the dark values going on. And before I do that, I want to pay attention that there's a real bright highlight right here. Now, again, I'm not done with my highlights. I'm just kind of mapping in where they go. But I'm ready to go ahead and find start sort of this darker area. And I don't want to go too dark too fast. I'm going to go with something about like that. Again, I'm staying in the same hue, the same, um, you know, color range, just making a little darker. Now, I mentioned when we add white to a color, we get tints. When we add black to a color, we get shades. So this is a shade of that value that I started with in the middle. All right, and so now I'm just adding a little more value to this. All right, and if you'll notice, it gets really dark back in here. So I'm going to start adding some more darker values in a second. But I want to pay attention again to this and I'm going to turn this down even smaller and the opacity up just a hair because I want to really find this and define this little lip because this kind of comes up and it sort of makes a fairly sharp contrast in color from that light to that dark Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right. <laughs> now I'm going to pick an even darker value here, just a little bit. And I'm going to start really adding uh, some of that dark. And again, notice I'm going not only uh, down to make it dark, but I'm picking up a little more of that color by also going to the right a little bit. And so I'm going to make that a little darker. So you'll, you'll, uh, if you are in the drawing class also, this is the same lesson that I do with the drawing class. You'll get to, to do this again. Uh, but this is, um, a great, um, way to learn to draw. Look for those shapes and then pay attention to how these values change. Now, Again, I chose this shape because it's that cylinder. And so now we're looking at how cylinders, when we draw a cylinder, and a cylinder is, uh, you know, um, has a hollow down the middle, if you will, and has um, generally sort of a round shape. Um, and in our, in our um, situation, it's standing vertically going up and down. And so I'm just adding a little value there. But because it's a cylinder and because that light's coming from left to right, <clears throat> we get this sort of slow but very even transition. You notice it doesn't jump from one uh, dark value to a light value or from a light value to a dark value. It goes real slow and the transitions are, are real subtle. And the reason for that is because uh, cylinders have a real smooth transition in their shape. And so the value uh, as we apply it is going to be also real smooth in that same sort of way. We're not going to see a big, a big jump out of nowhere. All right, so I'm pretty happy with what I've got just about with my value of my picture here in the back. And so... I'm ready to start working on my pair. I'm going to add a little more dark right in here. All right. So I'm pretty happy with that. I, I hope you guys have got something that you like and uh, that, that you're happy with. And paying attention to where those shadows are. And so now I'm going to go to my green. And so I'm going to pick um, sort of a yellowy green. Pears are often sort of a yellowy green. But I don't want it to be as yellow as they've got theirs. I want a little more color. And so I'm going to go with this medium. I'm going to do that thing where I turn the size up, put the opacity down. 
And I'm going to go ahead and add a little color to this cool pear. And because now I use that sort of red orange in the background, man, that pear really becomes that focal point. And the pear is really very much like those grapes. It's a big sphere. Now, it's not a perfect sphere because it's got this little part that comes up here. But when we treat the value of it, we look at how we apply value to this shape, this sphere shape, we can think about it sort of the same way. Now, when I go to the lighter, I am going to pick up some more of this yellow. So I'm going to make the, the value and the shade, the color of it, um, a little um, more complicated, if you will, uh, a little richer. It'll have a little more um, um, texture to it and uh, a little more um, interest really and so and then I want to find an even lighter because this thing gets really light here and I don't know if you can hear the family but they're really loving Ellen's game of games uh, okay all right and so I'm probably liking that pretty good. I'm not ready to add whites yet. White's kind of popping. I'll put those sort of in uh, towards the end there. But I do need to start thinking about those darker values. And this is where I'm going to go back to sort of that darker, to more of that greeny color. And I'm going to pick something uh, down here in this sort of clay area. That's what I call that, that sort of value. But it looks like a, it always reminds me of, uh, we used to dig clay up in Moorhead to make uh, pottery with, ceramics with. All right. And so I am about got my medium tone in there. And so, again, because we're looking at a sphere and because a sphere, much like a cylinder, has a real slow transition it doesn't have sharp edges like a square. Uh, that sphere is going to also have a, a fairly slow transition. We're not going to see it jump real hard from one value uh, to the next. And so I want to turn that opacity down. Oop, opacity down. And I'm going to do a little blending here just to kind of make that a little softer transition. All right. And then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to go even a little further to that green and a little further to the dark. And I'm going to start really finding sort of those dark parts. Now, notice now that, remember, that light's coming from the top left. So this bottom right is really going to get dark because it's going to be collecting the most shadow. So let's add that in here. And... Get that going. I'm about ready to turn my size down because I've found most of the big areas of value. And I'm going to start looking for those smaller areas. And I'm going to go even a little darker. And I'm going to turn the opacity up just a little bit, but the size down a little bit. And I'm really going to start finding those dark areas. All right. Look how dark that gets over here. Almost black. And, and again... Uh, I'm using the Chrome Canvas, uh, whatever you're using. If you've got a pencil, uh, paper, uh, then you're still going to do the same thing I'm doing here. Overlapping, going over those lines over and over again uh, to make those darker and darker. And get them a little a little more towards like what we see here. All right. And I'm getting pretty happy with the value of my pair. I like that pretty good. All right. Now, if you notice, it's got this. A uh, little stem here, and that stem is really dark. And so I'm going to draw it with my pencil, and I'm going to zoom in here so I can see. And so it kind of does this little thing. It kind of, kind of comes up and and makes this shape. Now I'm not putting it in real dark yet because I'm just trying to find it. And then it's got this shadow, this neat shadow that it does that it kind of creates there. All right, now I'm ready to really make that dark because I'm committed. I like that shape. I think it's in the right spot. 
And when I zoom this out, I think that's going to be real close to what I want to see there. Real close. Let's add a little more over here. And it's a little thicker, so let's add it there. And then there's a little bit of shadow kind of coming up that way. All right. While I've got this, I'm going to add a little bit of detail underneath this and a little more value under this part of the pair. And I like to kind of make those cross hatch marks, those little scribbles back and forth and create some cool value that way. And I'm also going to find the edge of this pair just to find that a little more. Same with the bottom of that picture. I'm a and because I'm using that same color, it's going to kind of tie things in together a little bit. I'm going to use that to kind of identify and show that table where that ends too. All right. So I like what I've got there pretty well. I'm ready to start looking at grapes. All right. So the grape color I'm going to go with is going to be over here on this side. Because it's not going to be in the red-orange family. It's going to be in the red-purple family. And so I want to keep it pretty purpley and so i'm going to go with something like this and the first thing i'm going to do is pick a medium i think that's a little too purple let's go a little more to the red all right there we go and i like that now that's gonna be my medium let's let's call that it and the first thing i'm gonna do is go ahead and add a little bit oops i want to again go small because these are grapes so I'm going to turn my opacity up a little bit, opacity up a little bit. All right, and let's start adding a little color to these grapes. All right, and so, again, I know that my grapes, and I'm just going to make that purple because I got another grape back there because I missed a little orange. All right, so I'm getting my purple going here from my grapes, my sort of reddish purple here. And the first thing I want to do is laying that middle tone. So I, just like I did with the uh, the the cylinder, that that pitcher, and with the uh, pear, I can add my uh, highlights and my uh, shadows and make them look three dimensional. So here we go. We've just about got. All right. All right. Okay. So that's uh, sort of my basic grape. And now I'm ready to start <coughs> thinking about that dark. And so again, I'm going to pick my pencil, but I'm going to come to a really dark over here, something really dark and rich. And I want to zoom in and really start finding those edges and start making some of that real dark uh, value that's going on in the back. Let me Turn the size down, but the opacity all the way up. Okay. So the first place I notice is how dark these shadows become in here. And so I'm going to find these. And again, they are a, uh, these are um, little spheres. So we're not going to see uh, real hard transitions. They don't have. Uh, real sharp edges so we're gonna try to make a real soft transition from the lighter part of the grape uh, to that darker part of the grape and this part's really dark here this one's really dark look how dark that gets right here and so I'm just paying attention to where those dark values are and those light values are and I'm remembering that these aren't just grapes and uh, they're they're spheres and so I want to remember to treat them like spheres treat them like the spheres they are and they need the treatment that a sphere gets which is that darker on the side that's in shadow and that lighter bright that's on the side that's catching that light and then the last thing we'll do here is we'll pop in our whites and that'll really show where our highlights are. All right. And so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and you can kind of see what I'm doing there. I'm just adding uh, a little bit of 
a value here to show that these, and this needs to come back here a little bit, but show that these are round. These are little spheres. All right. And I'm really excited about adding the light values in because uh, these grapes are going to look great when we start adding those brighter light values here soon. All right. And again, you can probably hear my dog snoring over here. He's really cute. All right. So let's get these grapes into this one here. And then I've got these little bunch that's hanging down. And again, I'm applying that dark to the right side and to the bottoms of them mostly to show that that's the part that's in shadow and I realize I'm way going over time today and so you all um, are probably finished and taking a little nap and that's okay all right so there's that one it's real dark and let's put this one in here all right, and then the last ones here. Let's get these in. They're dark. All right, I like it. Now uh, I'm going to bring in my highlights on those grapes. I'm going to go with something really bright. Something like that. Let's, and I'm just going to pop that in real quick. Because I've already got my medium tones in there. So I'm just finding a little of those lighter areas. Up on the top of this, that's real light. And that one's got a little highlight to it. Don't forget that there. This one's got a little extra highlight to it up here on the top. This one's got that little highlight. All right. Now I'm ready to come and just take a little. First of all, I'm going to come pick a real dark black. And the first thing I want to do is kind of pop in some of. Oh, and I'm going to actually choose my pen tool because I'm really ready to um, do a little uh, pop in some real nice black here just to kind of and I'm this is where I let it get what I call painterly I want my marks to be seen you might not want yours to be seen I kind of like when we can see sort of these little black marks that show where our drawing is and help us identify and see those those contour lines and look for those little details but you don't have to if you don't like that I like to pop mine in like that it's really a stylistic thing I think uh, uh, I just kind of like the way it looks I like the little definition. Uh, mostly I like because <laughs> when I was uh, in Italy studying, I got to see all these great masters. And my favorite thing was when you got to see their drawings that they didn't have completely finished. And there was something kind of neat about that. And so I end up doing that a lot in my drawings. I like to kind of um, make it look like maybe they weren't completely finished. Uh, you kind of caught the artist and working on something. All right, and so I'm just gonna kind of put that in there. All right, last thing I want to do is I'm gonna put in white, and then we'll be done. All right, so I'm going with a real bright white. 
And I'm going to put in that up here at the top of that lip. And I'm going to find those the little grapes, the highlights on those grapes. All right. There's a little highlight here on this pear. A little highlight here. A little highlight there. Here, highlight there, high, highlight everywhere, highlight. All right, don't let's not forget about this one. Right, and there's definitely a highlight that kind of finds the front of that picture. All right, and I got this little highlight. I'm going to find that. All right. One last thing I'm going to do, and this is just uh, for my own uh, uh, sanity. I know it sounds crazy, but I like to bring that. Uh, I'm going to bring a nice, real, real pale, warm uh, sort of pale color with that pastel and a really pretty good size, but I'm going to turn it opacity on it. And I'm going to go over this background and you can't even see what it's doing that's how little change it's making uh, i'm going to turn it up past it just a little bit but uh realistically i really don't want uh it to change much i just want to soften and i don't know if you can tell but there's because there's highlight in the all those uh those shapes we just drew i want to show that highlight or that light uh, in the background. So I'm adding a little of that pale over here to the left side and less of it over here to the right side. In fact, I'm going to go do that thing where, uh, yeah, something like that. And again, opacity is real low. I'm going to come over here with dark on this side. All right, still life. That's mine. Uh, I hope you got something that you like. Uh, again, uh, I like to see those when we get done here today. Uh, if you have not uh, been in class, but you did yours asynchronously, uh, post it so I can see it. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed doing a still life today. <coughs> I love still life, so I think it's a neat project. And so I'm kind of glad that's one of them that we ended up doing this module. All right, you guys have a great day. Thanks for playing along.